Ms. Roche. Tēnā koe, Mr. Speaker. Ena mana, ena reo, ena waka, ena raurangi tērā. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Nā mihi nui kia koutou i te whare. Um, it's right to be speaking on this bill, I think, uh, in Te Wiki o Te Reo, mm. and also at the end of the month of Matariki, uh, which is, of course, the time to reflect on the past and a time to plan for the future. So I salute the Minister for his efforts in bringing this to the House today so that Parliament can actually speak about Te Reo, the importance of Te Reo, and the legacy that we want our children to have in the future with having access to Te Reo. Mr Speaker, we understand that the purpose of this bill is to implement the government's Te Reo Māori Ora Māori language strategy. The bill proposes to replace the Māori Language Act of 1987, to amend the Broadcasting Act of 1989 and amend the Māori Television Service, Te Aratuku Whakata Irirangi Māori Act of 200, uh, 2003. The bill establishes the new agency, Te Matawai, as an independent statutory entity to provide leadership on behalf of iwi and Māori in their role as kaitiaki of the Māori language and for the roles of Te Tauro Whiri, the Māori Language Commission, and Te Māngai Pāho, Māori Broadcasting Funding Agency, to continue under the leadership of Te Matawai. Te Putahi Pāoho, the Māori Television Electoral College is disestablished under this bill, and its functions are also transferred to Te Matawai. The membership of Te Matawai is proposed to be seven appointed people who are geographically determined across clusters of iwi, three by Māori language stakeholder Te, Re te Reo Tukutuku, and two by the Crown. While the bill's aspirational objective of affirming and strengthening Te Reo Māori as a taonga, of which iwi and Māori are kaitiaki, is laudable, there are considerable concerns among iwi and Māori that the bill will fail to achieve this. And I will out outline those concerns in a moment, but I should be clear that the Green Party is opposing this bill. We are not convinced that the changes pr proposed will improve access to or development of Te Reo. And I note that this is shared in other parts of the House too. But there is very little evidence to show that a change in the leadership body is the answer to the real and serious concerns about the strength and development of Te Reo. We are compelled by the concerns that were raised from the Te Puni Kōkere consultation process. The consultation process on the draft strategy that led to the bill was a small number of hui over 11 days in February, and we consider that that was inadequate. I note the point that Te Uruo Flavel made, that by passing this for the first reading, it will go to select committee but, Mr Speaker, we believe in appropriate decision-making and we believe there should have been fuller consultation before it came to the House. A Waitangi tribunal claim is another one of our concerns, Y2441, which is being brought by the New Zealand Māori Council, claiming that they should have been consulted on the strategy, but were not consulted. We're also concerned that some iwi wish to assert their te riti relationship with the te reo, with the Crown directly, not through an agency such as Te Matawai, which is seen by many as a pan-tribal agency. And I note the concerns that um, the speaker before me, Calvin Davies, has outlined in terms of the hapu of, uh, um, uh, uh, of up north. We also concerned that the appointment process to Te Matawai involves artificially clustered geographical, geographical groups of iwi who in some cases will have considerable difficulty working together to appoint a member that is acceptable to all iwi in the cluster. 
And Mr Speaker, we have said before, during the process of the legislation for treaty settlements, that we have had concerns about the fact that the Crown chooses who it will negotiate with and who it won't by clustering iwi and hapu together and choosing some who are in and some who are out, and that it is divisive. We have the same concerns with this bill, sir. We're further concerned about the funding for the promotion of Te Reo, which will be negotiated between Te Matawai and the Crown, rather than provided on a basis of evidence. And we we're concerned that this suggests it's necessary to reverse. Um, we we're concerned that this means that the Crown will actually not base their judgments on, ev on evidence, but will base it on whatever they choose as their criteria at the time. And using putia, using money as a way to determine outcomes, is another form of control. And we're also concerned at the loss of the independent, independent Crown entity status for Te Tauraferi and Te Māngai Pāho, that this may make them more subject to political influence. And we have already seen the politicisation of our public service, sir. We don't want to see it happening uh, to the agencies that are, um, are set up to save and protect and promote Te Reo Māori. So how then does this reorganisation resolve the core concerns about the promotion and the development of Te Reo? Where is the commitment to the resources and the prioritisation of Te Reo by government, given government will maintain financial control of this year? Mr Speaker, we too look forward to a time where all our tamariki Māori are fluent in Te Reo Māori, where all New Zealanders can use at least some of Te Reo, where we can aho, aroha tia Te Reo. It's the birthright of our children to have clean rivers and beaches to swim in, and it is our birthright, their birthright, to have the language of Aotearoa New Zealand um, accessible to them. Mr Speaker, we can have a smarter, cleaner, fairer New Zealand where Te Reo can thrive and flourish. And we agree that Parliament can be doing much more to facilitate that. But unfortunately, this bill is not it. Honourable Tauhinaro. Um, uh, me takuwaru hakiakwe.